Fear-mongering is a huge thing in this community. And so I thought it would be a good idea to relate this essay that I had written about it. So maybe like for those, I know a lot of you who follow me on my channel, they fo you follow a lot of paranormal channels, probably some spiritual channels and gurus and things. And so, you know, I kind of wanted to put this essay out there just in case some of you have found yourselves in somewhat of a predicament <laughs> in a way, but also to open your eyes to things that might be suspicious, you know? that I've noticed in this community that are very fear-based, which is not good. You don't want to put out more negative energy, more lower vibrations into the universe that, you know, we as a society have enough negative energy within it and yeah, it's not great. It's not great. So, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to try to help those who might have issues seeing the difference between, you know, helpful information versus fear-mongering tactics for some kind of personal gain. So, yes. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. In the beginning of my journey, I may have fallen prey to the whole fear-mongering thing. You know, I had been going through... A traumatic haunting. I didn't know what the heck was going on. All my beliefs were flip-flopped upside down and I was scared and you know I followed some YouTubers, some creatives, creatives, some creators within you know the spiritual movement looking for answers. Some of them you know gave out the type of information that you could consider as a type of fear-mongering strategy and you know I started part of my journey on that type of information and so you'll see the beginning of my channel while my intention was not to be fear-mongering it came across that way especially with the whole um satanist movement and demons and things like, through growing and evolving um, spiritually and just through my experiences, my paranormal experiences and the experiences as a medium, I now understand that, you know, what the information that I had been diving in and then reproducing was, while to me was very helpful to others it didn't come across that way and so that is just part of my spiritual growth lesson as I evolve as a medium and so you know I want to make sure that the information that I give off doesn't come off as fear-mongering obviously but two is helpful to everybody and doesn't pit anyone against one another and I have also learned that while, you know, some actions have some really negative repercussions, you know, spiritually or paranormal wise, it is my job not to judge, but to lay down the facts, but also the and when I say facts, I mean, like, based off of what I've learned, it's facts to me. So I guess one would say an opinion, but the things that I've learned to put it out for everyone so they don't make the same mistakes that I've made because, you know, it sucks when you oopsie doopsie yourself, right? And 
this lesson I got spiritually bitch slapped on and I'm glad I did because I don't want to put out fear or any negativity into the environment when there's so much already. But so, yes, guys, that's why, that's why I tried to stay within the middle of the whole spirituality movement and like teachings and things, but also relay the things that I've learned, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So it's like, while I may not agree with a certain group, I can express my opinion why and express like what happens spiritually when you do certain things and the repercussions, but it's not my job to be like, this group is evil or blah, 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 blah. That is not, no, I will not be doing that. This is my essay on fear mongering and so Hopefully you guys learn something from it. Spirituality, a realm often associated with peace, enlightenment, and personal growth, has unfortunately not been immune to fear-mongering. While the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment can be transformative and empowering, there are instances where fear is used as a tool to manipulate and control individuals on their spiritual journey. This essay explores the phenomenon of fear-mongering in spirituality, its detrimental effects, and the importance of discernment in navigating the spiritual landscape. Discernment's extremely important, everyone. So, it is one thing I would work on practicing, and it's not even just for spiritual things, but for real-life experience and, you know, keeping yourself out of trouble and safe. Fear-mongering in spirituality takes various forms ranging from exaggerated claims about the consequences of not following a certain spiritual path to the propagation of apocalyptic scenarios and the demonization of certain beliefs or practices. This fear-based approach is often employed by individuals or groups seeking to gain power, control, or financial benefits by exploiting the vulnerability and insecurities of seekers. One common tactic used in fear-mongering is the manipulation of people's deepest fears and existential concerns. For example, some spiritual teachers or gurus may claim that only by adhering to their specific teachings or practices can individuals achieve salvation or avoid spiritual damnation. This creates a sense of urgency and fear of missing out on the promised spiritual rewards, leading individuals to blindly follow without critical thinking or questioning. Fear-mongering can also manifest through the propagation of apocalyptic scenarios. Some spiritual leaders may predict catastrophic events such as the end of the world or a global spiritual shift and use fear to convince followers to prepare or take certain actions. These doomsday prophecies instill fear and anxiety, often leading individuals to abandon their own agency and rely solely on the guidance of the fear mongerers. Additionally, fear mongering can involve the demonization of certain beliefs or practices. Spiritual leaders or groups may create an us versus them mentality, portraying those who do not adhere to their teachings as misguided, evil, or spiritually inferior. This tactic not only instills fear in followers, but also isolates them from diverse perspectives and hinders their personal growth and spiritual exploration. Fear-mongering tactics create an us-versus-them mentality by fostering a sense of division, polarization, and exclusivity. Here are some ways fear-mongering tactics contribute to this mindset. So, identifying a common enemy. Fear-mongers often create a narrative that there is a common enemy or threat that individuals must unite against. They may portray certain groups, ideologies, or practices as the enemy, blaming them for societal problems or personal struggles. 
By identifying this enemy, fearmongers create a sense of cohesion among their followers, reinforcing the idea that they are part of a special chosen or enlightened group that stands against the perceived threat. Number two, reinforcing group identity. Fearmongers emphasize a strong group identity among their followers. They create a sense of belonging, often using symbols, rituals, or language that distinguishes their group from others. By reinforcing this group identity, fearmongers foster a collective mentality that strengthens the us identity and separates it from the perceived them or outsiders. Number three. Promoting a sense of superiority. Fearmongers often portray their own group or teachings as superior, claiming that they possess the only true knowledge or path. They may dismiss alternative beliefs, practices, or groups, labeling them as misguided, ignorant, or even evil. By promoting a sense of superiority, fearmongers create a hierarchical dynamic that reinforces the us versus them mentality. Number four, creating fear and distrust. Fear mongers exploit fear and distrust further divide and polarize. They may exaggerate or fabricate threats posed by the perceived enemy using fear inducing language and imagery to heighten emotions. By instilling fear and distrust, fear mongers strengthen the idea that their group is the only safe haven while others are dangerous or untrustworthy. Number five, encouraging conformity and ostracization. Fear mongers promote conformity within their group, discouraging individuals from questioning or challenging their teachings. They often use shame, guilt, or ostracization as tactics to keep their followers in line. Those who deviate from the fearmongers' teachings or express alternative viewpoints may be labeled as traitors, heretics, or even enemies themselves. This reinforces the us versus them mentality and discourages critical thinking or independent exploration. Number six, exploiting confirmation bias. Fear mongers leverage confirmation bias by selectively presenting information that supports their narrative and vilifies the perceived enemy. They manipulate their followers' perceptions and beliefs, reinforcing pre-existing biases and prejudices. This amplifies the us versus them mentality by perpetuating a distorted and one-sided view of the world. By employing fear-mongering tactics, individuals are manipulated into viewing the world through a lens of division where their group is pitted against an external enemy. This mentality strengthens group cohesion, discourages critical thinking, and fosters an environment of exclusion and animosity. It is important to be aware of these tactics and strive for empathy, understanding, and open-mindedness to transcend the us versus them mindset. The detrimental effects of fear-mongering in spirituality are numerous. Firstly, it undermines the very essence of spirituality, which is about self-discovery, inner peace, and connection with the divine. Fear-based approaches divert attention away from personal growth and self-reflection, replacing them with anxiety, guilt, and blindly following external authorities. Fear-mongering also erodes trust and fosters a culture of dependency. When individuals are constantly bombarded with fear-inducing messages, they may become reliant on the fear mongers for guidance and reassurance. This dependency can lead to the suppression of critical thinking and the abdiction of personal responsibility, inhibiting true spiritual growth and self-empowerment. Moreover, Fear-mongering and spirituality can have financial implications. Some fear-based spiritual leaders may exploit their followers financially, using fear as a marketing tool to sell expensive workshops, courses, or products promising protection or salvation. This exploitation not only drains individuals' financial resources, but also perpetuates a cycle of fear and dependency. In navigating the spiritual landscape, discernment is crucial. It is essential to develop the ability to critically evaluate the messages and teachings 
encountered on the spiritual path. Discernment involves questioning, seeking multiple perspectives, and trusting one's own intuition and inner wisdom. It is about being open-minded yet discerning, embracing what resonates while being cautious of fear-based manipulation. Ultimately, spirituality should be a personal journey of self-discovery, growth, and connection. It should empower individuals to tap into their own inner wisdom and cultivate a sense of peace and purpose. Fear-mongering in spirituality undermines these fundamental principles, perpetuating fear, dependency, and disempowerment. By cultivating discernment and promoting open dialogue, we can create a healthier spiritual landscape that encourages personal growth, critical thinking, and genuine connection with the divine. Fear-mongering in spirituality can manifest in various forms, each with its own unique tactics and strategies. Here are some common forms in which fear-mongering can be seen in the spiritual landscape. Number one, exaggerating consequences. Some spiritual leaders or teachers may exaggerate the consequences of not following their specific path or teachings. They may claim that deviating from their guidance will result in spiritual damnation, eternal suffering, or missed opportunities for enlightenment. By instilling fear of dire consequences, they manipulate individuals into adhering strictly to their teachings without questioning or critical thinking. You know, this is just one example. There are other religions and cultures that are guilty of this, but the whole, oh, if you don't do this, 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 you're going to hell. That's just an example. But, you know, not true as what they say. Number two, apocalyptic scenarios. Fear mongering can involve the propagation of apocalyptic scenarios where spiritual leaders predict catastrophic events or global shifts in consciousness. They may claim that the world is on the brink of destruction or that only a select few will be saved from impending doom. This instills fear and anxiety, leading individuals to seek refuge in the fear mongers' teachings or to take drastic actions out of fear. Three, demonization of beliefs or practices. Fear-mongering can involve the demonization of certain beliefs or practices that do not align with a particular spiritual leader or group's teaching. They may portray alternative paths as misguided, evil, or spiritual inferior, creating an us-versus-them mentality. This fear-based tactic isolates individuals from diverse perspectives, discourages critical thinking, and fosters a sense of fear and judgment towards others. Number four. Fear of spiritual attacks or entities. Some fear mongers exploit individuals' fears of spiritual attacks or negative entities. They may claim that without their specific protection or rituals, individuals will fall prey to malevolent forces. This fear tactic creates a dependency on the fear mongerer for salvation or safety, leading individuals to rely solely on external authorities instead of developing their own inner strength and discernment, which this channel is about giving people information and the tools that they need in order to fight things. It doesn't necessarily have to come from me. I just like to give tips and tricks and, you know, I like to explain what happens if a person does a certain action, like the consequences of certain things, but I will never be like, oh my god, you have to come to me, I'm the only person who can help you. It is not true. There are so many people that know way more than I do and have way more experience than I do that probably know more and have better techniques to protect you. And you know, this channel is based off my experiences and what works for me and I like to share them because I know that I'm not the only one that these things can help. But there are channels out there that'll be like, oh well, you know. If you do this, you know, you're going to have a demon haunt you or whatever. But, yeah. Number five, guilt and shame. Fear-mongering can involve the use of guilt and shame to manipulate individuals into conforming to a specific spiritual path. Spiritual leaders may emphasize the supposed moral superiority of their teachings and imply that not following their guidance is a betrayal 
or a sign of spiritual weakness. This instills fear of judgment and ostracization, leading individuals to suppress their own authentic beliefs and experiences. Number six, financial exploitation. Fear-mongering can have financial implications with some spiritual leaders exploiting their followers for monetary gain. They may use fear as a marketing tool, selling expensive workshops, courses or products that promise protection, enlightenment, and or salvation. This financial exploitation drains individuals' financial resources while perpetuating a cycle of fear and dependency. It is important to be aware of these forms of fear-mongering and spirituality to avoid falling into manipulative traps. Developing discernment, critical thinking, and trusting one's own intuition can help individuals navigate the spiritual landscape with clarity and empowerment. Using discernment when it comes to fear mongers is crucial to avoid falling into their manipulative tactics. Here are some steps to help you exercise discernment. Question the narrative. When encountering fear mongering messages or claims, question the narrative being presented. Ask yourself if the information is backed by credible sources, evidence, and logical reasoning. Look for alternative perspectives and seek out diverse sources of information to gain a broader understanding of the issue. Number two, analyze emotional manipulation. Fear mongers often employ emotional manipulation techniques to evoke fear, anger, or outrage. Be aware of your emotional response and consider if it is based on rational analysis or if it is being exploited to manipulate your perception. Take a step back and evaluate the situation objectively, separating emotions from facts. You know who are really good at this? Politicians. Number three, fact check and verify information. Fear mongers may distort or exaggerate information to fit their agenda. Take the time to fact check the claims being made. Look for reliable sources, cross-reference information, and consult experts or reputable organizations. Verify the accuracy of the information presented before accepting the truth. Now, when it comes to paranormal things, that's a little difficult because a lot of it isn't um, fact-based. It's more experience-based, so it's a little tricky to do that. Oh yeah. Number four. Assess intentions and motivations. Consider the intentions and motivations of the fearmonger. Are they genuinely concerned about the well-being of others, or do they have ulterior motives such as gaining power, influence, or financial gain? Understanding their underlying motivations can help you determine if their message is driven by genuine concern or manipulation. Number five, evaluate patterns in consistency. Look for patterns in the fearmonger's behavior and messaging. Do they consistently employ fear-based tactics, exaggerations, or divisive language? Assess their track record and consider if their past actions align with their current claims. Consistency and credibility are essential factors in discerning the trustworthiness of a fearmonger. Number six. Engage in critical thinking, develop and apply critical thinking skills to assess the validity and impact of fear-mongering tactics. Analyze the logical coherence of arguments, evaluate evidence objectively, and consider the potential consequences of accepting or rejecting the fear-mongerer's message. Engaging in critical thinking allows you to make informed decisions based on reason and evidence. Number seven, seek diverse Perspectives. Avoid echo chambers and actively seek out diverse perspectives. Engage in conversations with people who hold different viewpoints. Listen to their arguments and challenge your own assumptions. Exposure to diverse perspectives helps broaden your understanding and guards against being swayed solely by fear mongers. Number eight, trust your intuition, trust your instincts, and listen to your gut feeling. If something feels off or manipulative, take it as a warning sign. Your intuition can often guide you towards recognizing fear-mongering tactics and protecting yourself from their influence. By practicing discernment, you can develop a critical mindset that helps you navigate through fear-mongering messages and make informed decisions based on facts, reasons, and empathy. That was a lot! <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Seriously, I've noticed 
quite a few channels, some decently sized channels that, you know, that their entire channel and all the information that they project has either a negative connotation or has negative energetic impressions, if you want to call it, or, you know, evoke fear responses or guilt or anything along those lines. The thing is, when you receive information, the whole point is to educate, guide, sometimes, you know, protect, depending, but you should never get a negative vibe from the information that you are receiving. Now, obviously, when you are brought up in certain religions and cultures, things that kind of go against the grain, or at least go against with what you believe, sometimes may evoke that in a person. And that is understandable, but if the information that is being put forth evokes fear, that's not really good because you don't want to add to the low vibration. You don't want to put out negative energy. There's so much of that already in this world, on this planet, in this realm. You don't want to add to it. But it's also important to say that it's very useful or helpful to have information that can protect you and help you understand certain things in order to prepare yourself or protect yourself, if that makes sense. Um, but it should never come from a place of fear. And so if you come across a channel like that, Maybe take what they say with a grain of salt or seek other perspectives. So one of the most important things to take from this, and even just in when you're looking to grow spiritually or learning mediumship or about the paranormal, don't go to just one person because everyone has their own experiences and each experience is very valuable. The paranormal is not a one size fits all for everybody. Everyone's going to experience it differently. You know, some mediums are going to have different abilities than others, or even if they have the same abilities, they might, you know, experience them in a different way. And so I will always advocate that you, you try looking at other perspectives and get your information from a multitude of sources. I have a library in my bedroom with over a hundred books on this subject matter because I found that, you know, everyone's experiences are extremely valuable. And while not everything, not all experiences from certain mediums helped me, eventually I did find some techniques, especially growing as a medium, that fit me more than others. And so it's kind of like that when looking for information. And like I said, I don't know everything. If you come across anybody, especially a psychic medium, who claims to know everything, fucking run. Because bullshit. Second of all, that just tells me their ego is a little too high. And when you deal with people with extremely high egos, their information isn't always coming from a great source. And yeah, so take that into consideration that there is no such thing as a paranormal expert. You can be a professional and do it for a profession, right? But there's no such thing as someone who is an expert in the paranormal. You just can't be. Why? Because we're humans. So anything outside of the whole humanity thing, we don't know. There are so many entities that exist out there that we can't even perceive. Now, being honest, I can see a lot of shit, but I don't see everything. There are so many entities 
that I don't even know what exists, what doesn't exist, because I haven't experienced them yet. But I will never say, oh, this thing does not exist, or this thing is fake, especially if I haven't experienced it yet, because like I said, there are some things that humans cannot perceive. Therefore, anything that is outside of humanity, you can't consider yourself an expert on. Especially when it comes to like demons and earthbound spirits, anything outside of that realm, because we only know from our human self. We don't know all the abilities that demons have. We don't know everything an earthbound spirit is capable of. We don't. There are some that are very malicious that have certain abilities that they keep hidden because if people found out, you know, then they'll know how to protect themselves against it. That's just an example. But it's like there are so many things that exist that we cannot perceive. There are, you know, there are so many, just like on Earth, there are so many organisms that exist that humans haven't even identified yet. There are so many things in the ocean that have not been identified yet. You know, it's kind of funny that people joke that people, you know, instead of figuring out everything that exists in our oceans and rainforests that they just said, eh, screw it, and now they're in space. A little bit of truth to that because there's a lot of things that they cannot perceive. And, you know, for every organism, there exists the same thing but in the spiritual level. So every organism has their own spirit associated with it. And so if we can't even identify all the organisms on this planet, how are we going to identify all the organisms that exist on the spiritual realms? So, yes. So if anyone who claims that they know everything, run. Because <laughs> that is bullshit. So, you know, I thought I would uh, share this because it is important. And hopefully, you know, as my channel progresses, I can continue portraying helpful information, you know, as a way to educate people to protect themselves and, you know, um, prepare themselves or just learn things what not to do, stuff like that. You get my gist. But so yeah, if you guys watched my entire video, thank you guys so much for sticking around. Um, I'm taking a little break from doing all of the reactions to paranormal creators because your girl needs a psychic break because my health right now is not so great. Love that people, you know, rev their engines as loud as they can here while I'm filming, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this entire video. If you made it this far, you guys are awesome. Um, I will also have the essay that I wrote on my website for people to go back to. Um, it's not information I would want people to pay for. Like, this should be out there for everybody. But so, yeah, guys, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, as always, leave them down below. I try to answer as many people as possible. Sometimes I can't get to everybody. But again, thank you guys so much. And I will see you soon. Peace.